Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Own the Life of Your Dreams YouTube channel. My name is Tamisha. So glad to have you here with me today. Have you been wondering why your open rates to your emails are not as high as you would like them to be? Well, I have the perfect video for you today. Maybe you're not following one of these 11 ways as to why your emails aren't opening up or aren't opening up as much as they used to. So I'm about to share my screen so you can figure out why and we'll get this party started. All right, so what we're gonna be talking about today is the 11 reasons why emails go to the spam folder. So if you have learned or if you have seen a decrease in your emails open rate, then more than likely your emails are going to the spam folder and there are 11 reasons why. Now, I am a part of a lot of different, I have an autoresponder, which is AWeber, and I am a part of PLS and I use those systems to send out emails regularly and also my lead gen sends out uh, emails as well. And I have noticed that sometimes that there is a decrease in my email open rate. And I thought that it may be my email, something is going wrong. And then I realized that, that this is a common problem. And it's not just with Abe Weber, it's not just with Paralead System. It, I also heard that this is, this is a problem with Get Response and other email mailing services that are out there. So I want to put this out there. So if you are, you know, struggling with email marketing, don't worry, there is a fix. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is the CAN, CAN Spam Act. The CAN Spam Act is what's enacted in 2003 and basically it is a way to limit or basically eliminate spam and it's any emails that are going out to from one person anything for uh, business or commercial business product or service company all right so it includes any emails from any commercial website as well as anybody who is promoting anything from a commercial website all right so this also includes business to business emails so if you are emailing someone in your business and you're emailing to another business and they do not want to hear from you whether it's they don't know you or um, a whole host of different reasons then you are violating the can spam act and you can get hit up with some serious violations including being fined and there's fines up to sixteen thousand dollars so definitely be careful with all of that and basically this all means is that all emails must comply with the law you cannot go out and just spam people and i'm pretty sure that you are if you are just a person and you're just sending out a whole bunch of emails to different random people then i'm sure that that you fall under that as well. I don't know why you'd be watching this, but I'm throwing that out there anyway. So number one way or one number one reason that your email might be considered spam is that you didn't get permission to email that person. So, and this is something that I'm kind of thinking about with my legion, but they said that their lists are legit, but they said that the buying of email lists, when people don't know you, and they subscribe to some type of company for whatever, and then they're getting all of these emails, they might consider that as spam because they don't know where it's coming from. And if they holler spam, then you can get banned and, and fined. So buying email lists can be um, one that can be a don't. Uh, you gotta be careful of the company that you're with and where they're getting their emails from because they could be just pulling it off of web servers. You never know. So you definitely need to be careful of that. Also, manually entering emails from like a business card or from people that you met on the street that have given you information. If they don't remember you, then they can call your email spam and then you get in trouble and are liable for that. So make sure that you know you are memorable and that you do these following things if you are meeting people in person and sending out emails as follow-ups first make sure that you use an opt-in form to gain all of your email subscribers 
that's when you're doing any type of web internet marketing. Make sure that you use an opt-in page and make sure that people know that the opt-in page is going to an email list because if they don't and they don't remember you, which is another one on the list, they can you know holler spam, which is a bad word, bad word in the email marketing arena all right also if you are meeting people in person to follow up with them you can do drip campaigns you can do personal emails to them saying hey i met you at such and such you know this is what i'm all about you can go to my website and if you're interested you know opt in or you can do some type of autoresponder follow-up series that is dedicated to talking specifically to people who you meet in person. So you have an autoresponder campaign specifically for those people, and when they come to you, they're good. They can opt into your list, and then everything is copacetic, all right? Number two, the spam IEP address, or not IEP, I think I'm in school, a spam IP address. And basically what that means is if anybody on your IP server at your house, at the school, at the library, wherever. If they're sp sending spam to other people, then once that IP address has been flagged as spam, then it's always flagged as spam. And so no matter whether your emails are legit or not, if there's anybody in your house that is you know, emailing people like crazy and sending them crazy stuff and anybody reports it, your IP address then becomes spam. And it doesn't just go with the IP address, it also goes with their email marketing service. So if any person in the service, uh, whether it's AWeber, uh, PowerLead System, um, GetResponse, MailChimp, all of those companies, any of those companies have a any person, any customer that is just spamming, spamming their links, spamming their websites out to the people that they email, then they can be banned as well. And if any of that, if you're sending emails to any of those services, they will look at you weird. And um, they will consider your email as spam automatically, even though it may not be. All right, and make sure you do your research. So make sure you research your email marketing service so you know for sure if those are the people you wanna get involved with and make sure that you check their spam rating, how well are they doing in that arena before you get involved, all right? Number three, you have low engagement rates. It's boring, okay? Um, the top webmail providers look at your open rates. They look at how many people are opening your emails and how many people are open, not even opening, just deleting your email straight after they see it. And if you get a whole bunch of people doing that, then that email, your emails are gonna go straight to the spam folder. It won't even be open. And I know I have been in the past a very, very bad proponent of doing that to other people, basically just deleting the messages and not unsubscribing. So, their emails end up in my spam folder. Didn't know that that was what was going on, but now that I know, I will do better with it. So once you know better, you do better. So you, to increase your open rates, you need to send emails at the right time. It's best to send it at a time when the people are awake and able to open their emails. So if you're emailing people in different time zones, you wanna be cognizant of that fact that they're not gonna open the email at you know your time seven o'clock at night because it could be in the middle of them in in the middle of the night at their time so you want to make sure that you send out perfect type timings and most email services have that option as well as make sure you perfect your subject headlines i have so i have a video before that i've talked about where you can look and check to see if your headlines you know will affect other people will make them want to open it and so you can always run your subject lines through there and figure that out as well. Also segment your list. Make sure you put your list in different segments. The people who are 
opening your emails and are opening your emails regularly need to be in a separate list and the ones that are kind of interested and maybe need a different, different retargeting campaign or someone else completely that is not opening up your emails which means you need to keep your list fresh by cutting those people out of your emails because they are doing more harm than good all right number four and who are you again <laughs> all right so this one is about people don't remember I have a husband, I love him dearly, but there's sometimes he doesn't remember what I said five minutes ago. And that's the same with people, they're you know up, they're excited, they're signing up for stuff, and they don't remember who they signed up for and why they signed up for it, maybe a day or two later. So one way to help you do your open rates with that or stay in a person's memory is basically send emails too unfrequently, or maybe send your emails more frequently is what I should say. So the, the rule or the guideline is 16 to 30 emails per month is a good range of making sure that you're memorable, make, making sure that people don't forget who you are, and sending an awesome welcome email to let them know, hey, this is who I am, this is what I'm about, and now I'm going to send you a whole bunch of follow-up series just to follow me in my endeavors, in my journey, and that's what this is gonna be about. So if you send that, they are more open to remembering you. So make sure that you brand your emails, make them memorable, make sure that your emails is the same format type and everything as your website because people are really picky when stuff doesn't match up. I mean, there's viruses out there, there are people who like to send them a whole bunch of spam and everything like that. They get a little nervous when things don't look the same, when things don't sound the same. If you are looking at somebody who, you know, has a college education and all of a sudden their emails sound like they're from the third grade, it's kind of weird. So you want to make sure that the voices match up. Your email swipes need to be changed to sound like you. Everything needs to be changed to sound and be branded by your brand. And make sure that your from line is something that they can recognize as branded by your company. All right. If you're liking the video, please subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified anytime I drop a new video. Thanks. Number five, no show email users. I have so many mailboxes, email boxes is ridiculous. And some of them I don't look at regularly. And I know that in the past I have sent people who I didn't really want to get emails from to those mailboxes because I didn't want to clutter the mailbox that I use regularly with all these emails. And so I don't really open them and those and uh, if I'm doing it, I'm sure your subscribers are doing it as well. So make sure that you go through your list and check the people who are not opening your emails on the regular, get rid of them because too many inactive email accounts, if they're looking the top providers, webmail providers are looking at this and they're seeing who is opening your emails and who is not. And if you're not purging your list, they're thinking red flag. They don't care who they're sending their emails to. So I'm going to protect my, my user and put your email in a spam folder. All right. So make sure that you purge your list regularly. All right. Um, before I go further, this is not something that came directly from me. I got this from Optin Monster. Thank you. You are awesome. I wanted to make sure I put that out there because I forgot to in the beginning. Number six, lying on the subject line. Bad, bad, bad. All right. It is against the law to intentionally mislead someone with your subject line in order to induce them to view your message. Calling something urgent or an emergency or telling someone that they got paid and they didn't is a bad, 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 bad thing. All right. You cannot fool someone into opening your emails. People do not like to be fooled. They do not like to be humiliated. And if you start on that trend, people are going to get mad and they are going to fight back. And generally what they're going to say is, this is spam, all right? And you get too many people doing that, 
then you will have a hard time getting your emails open because they will all be sent to the spam folder because it's a red flag in that instance. And don't try to be slick either. Um, don't use the opposite of what it is that you're going to be providing just to get people in the door. People are smarter than that, all right? And so they'll, you know, some people might think it's cute, but others might not like it that much. And you want to be error on the side of caution, all right? Number seven, who is this from? Um, if they do not know who your email is from and they do not recognize it, that is also illegal, okay? You cannot tell people that you are the president of the United States and you have put out this edict and you have to buy all of my products, okay? That is not going to fly. Talking for someone else is illegal, all right? Do not do it. Do not send someone an email pretending to be someone else. If you want to be memorable, make sure that you stand out with your company name. Make sure you brand your emails and make sure you use a from that is an individual from your company that people will recognize. And brand yourself. Hey, for me, it would be Own the Life of Your Dreams or Tamisha Holman. That is who you would get emails from. All right. Number eight, no physical address. And apparently it is illegal not to put your physical address on your emails. If you don't have your physical address, automatically it goes to spam. You can use the street address you're on. And I advise that if you're working from home, not to use your street address because people are crazy out there. But a P.O. box or a private mailbox that is from a commercial um, mailing agency that is registered with the post office. Um, awesome, awesome options. But please make sure that there's an address on there or your emails will not be opened because they'll be spam. All right, number nine, no unsubscribe link. Come on, y'all. People like options. And, you know, when they're ready to go, they're ready to go. You cannot hold people hostage to your email list. So you must have an unsubscribe link. And if they ask to be removed, you have to remove them within 10 business days. And you cannot ask them anything extra. They cannot pay a fee. They cannot uh, have to fill out this huge form. They can't you know, you can't ask them for their firstborn child. None of that. You just have to say, you know, fill out the the link, click the link to unsubscribe or, you know, do whatever your process is, email um, to get off the list. And that's it. Now, if you want somebody to complete a survey, because everybody wants to know why a person would be you know, would unsubscribe, why they're not a happy customer anymore, and you want them to fill out a survey, that's fine. You have to do that as an option after they unsubscribe. And that way they have the option to do it. Some will, some won't, but that's okay. You're going to be a fine anyway. All right. 10, using the bad spam words. All right. The words that when the spam filters fill through, oh, this is spam. And they, does it, if they have these words on there, it doesn't matter how good an email you have, it's automatically going to the spam folder because they are looking for these words because they know that they are those, you know, like late night info commercial words that you would hear that, you know, every all night, all day, the person is just screaming out all these words. It's amazing. Cancel any time. Check her money order. Click here. Congratulations, dear friend, only for only dollars, you know, free or toll free, so on and so forth. Um, they are triggered. The filters are triggered by these words. All right. And if you're unsure, you can go to this website here. It's called, called I Snot Spam. And you can put your subject line and your email into that program, it will rate your email on how deliverable it will be. So definitely use that information if you so choose. And the last but not least, your branded emails do not follow the rules. Now, if you are doing straight text in your emails, which is safe, 
It also is going to be, it will lower your engagement because it shows that branded emails have a higher engagement. So you can play and test with all of that to see which ones you want to do. However, here are some ground rules if you're using branded emails. Number one, use a maximum width of 600 to 800 pixels. You do not want to overwhelm your mobile or your desktop subscribers all right make sure you keep your html code as simple and clean as possible have no idea what that means <laughs> but um if you use an email template from one of your email service providers then you should be safe all right make sure you keep your image or text to ratio low so meaning you can't have a whole bunch of pictures in your email all right you have to have pictures and words if you and you have to have more words than pictures or else no go it's spam number three or four sorry make sure you compress your images first if it's too big to be open people aren't going to wait for your images to pop up and they'll be frustrated trying to wait and then they just delete it. it it won't even be read period so make sure that you compress it first don't use crazy fonts either like um you know comic sans script which i like but don't use any type of crazy fonts you stay stick with the ones that are common like Ariel and Georgia and Verdana and Times New Roman. All right, if you use those, you should be safe. And also, do not forget to optimize for mobile because most people are going to be reading your emails on their phones. So it needs to be easy to read in a simple text box, and your links need to be easy to click with the thumb. All right, so hopefully this was of value to you. If it was, make sure you give me the thumbs up and please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm giving you fresh daily videos just like this so that you can be successful online. And that is what I want. I want you to be successful online. Also, if you wanna know my number one way of making full-time money online, then check out the first link in the description. It gives you all the information that you need and I will personally link up with you to help you be successful on your online journey. All right. So until next time, my friend, make sure you think big, dream big, take action so that you may own the life of your dreams. Bye now.